Welcome to the FiberLight FRP Tank Sump Installation Training. You must follow all instructions and the procedures found in the OPW FiberLight Installation Manual for this product because everything you install must conform to NFPA 30A and 70 as well as all local codes. Since you will also be working in a potentially dangerous environment, you need to follow all OSHA guidelines as well. Don't even think about starting to install an FRP sump without the installation manual in hand. You're not going to memorize every step, so you need to have a printed copy throughout the installation and be sure to follow all of the steps in order. Let me show you where to get the manuals in case yours is missing in the packaging when you get on site. First, go to www.opwglobal.com and click on Brands and then FiberLite. Over to the right, you'll see the FiberLight website. Click on that link. You can also go directly to www.fiberlight.com, but sometimes people spell it wrong. So maybe going to OPW Global first will keep that from happening. Whatever works for you. Once on the FiberLight site, click Technical Resources and then Instruction Manuals. Scroll down and select any of the sump systems that are for fiberglass tank collar installation, such as the S8CR. Follow along in the manual while we review the steps during this video with our FiberLite guru, Jim Goodman. My name is Jim Goodman. I handle training for FiberLite manhole covers and FiberLite tank sump systems for OPW FiberLite. And today I'm going to be discussing installation training for any FiberLite tank sump system designed for installation onto a fiberglass tank collar. FiberLite currently sells three different ranges of tank sumps for installation on fiber, fiberglass tank collars, including the S8 CR series, the S14 CR series, and the S15 CR series. The installation procedures is identical for all three of these tank sump systems. Before we begin, uh, I'd like to review a few recommended installation practices for working with fiberglass materials. Number one, first of all, always follow all appropriate health and safety requirements and use appropriate PPE as required. These instructions will include certain symbols showing the appropriate PPE to be used during that step. Number two, very important to use cutting tools that are designed for use on fiberglass or composite materials. Failure to use appropriate cutting tools or blades may damage the fiberglass tank sumps and result in a poor installation. Number three, this is a very important installation practice. Any resins or adhesives used during the installation process must be kept in a warm and dry location until ready for use. It's extremely important that the internal temperature of all resins and adhesives used during the installation should be between 60 and 70 degrees at the time they are used. If working in extremely cold temperatures or temperatures well below 60 degrees, the material should be stored inside a warm vehicle until just prior to use. If working in extremely hot temperatures, a cold bucket of water can be used to keep the temperature down around 60 degrees until ready for use. At all times when working with fiberglass, surface preparation is extremely critical. Any fiberglass surfaces that will be fiberglassed or bonded will require that appropriate sanding take place to sufficiently expose the surface fibers on the tank sump surface. Failure to properly prepare surfaces prior to fiberglassing or bonding may result in a poor or leaking joint. Finally, it is important that any surfaces where bonding or fiberglassing will take place must be properly cleaned prior to that step. We strongly recommend the use of acetone as a solvent to clean the surface so that it is properly prepared and we also recommend the use of clean rags to wipe off any residual dust or acetone prior to working on that surface. Again, failure to clean surfaces prior to bonding may result in a pore or leaking joint. Step one, it is very important to ensure that all sump parts and material required for the installation procedure be on site prior to beginning the installation of the tank sump. Typically, FiberLite tank sumps are shipped as a kit, as shown on this page. The kits include the fiberglass tank sump base, a fiberglass top hat, a watertight sump lid, and then the appropriate manhole cover, frame, and skirt to be used for this installation. In addition, the installation kits should also be shipped with the tank sump kit. These kits include the RK5000 epoxy resin kit, 
three to four tubes of caulking to be used during the installation of the top hat. And finally, the SCR FGK fiberglassing kit that will be used during the installation of the tank sump base and the installation of the tank sump top hat. Step two, running string lines to measure tank sump burial depth. Prior to installing the tank sumps, it is important to determine the tank sump burial depth. This is important for two reasons. Number one, to determine if we have the right equipment on site prior to beginning installation. And number two, to determine if the sump bases will need to be trimmed. To do this, we will install a string line across the tank pad and above each of the tank sumps so that the burial depth of the sump can easily be measured. As shown in the drawing, the standard Fiberlite tank sump kits are designed for burial depths ranging from 60 to 40 inches deep. A 20 inch minimum clearance is required from the top of the sump base to finish grade level to allow for the top hat, the watertight lid, and the manhole cover and frame to be properly installed. After installing the string line, the tank sump base should be dry fitted onto the tank collar and a measurement should be taken from the string line to the top of the sump. If the measurement taken from the string line to the top of the sump base is less than 20 inches, then that corresponding amount will need to be cut off the top of the sump base. So for example, if the measurement is 15 inches, then 5 inches will need to be trimmed from the top of the sump base. Note that the maximum amount of sump that can be trimmed from the top of the sump base is 15 inches. If the sump is trimmed more than 15 inches, the top hat will not fit onto the sump base due to the taper on the sump base itself. Please also note that the sump top hat cannot be trimmed due to the fact that the sump top hat has a stainless steel ring factory installed on top. If the tank sump burial depth is less than 40 inches, the standard tank sump base cannot be used. It will be necessary to contact customer service and request a shallow burial tank sump base that will allow for burial depths below 40 inches. If tank sump burial depths exceed 60 inches, it will be necessary to contact customer service and order 12 inch extensions. These extensions will extend the height of the sump base by 12 inches. Step three. Trimming tank sump bases as required. After determining whether or not the sump will need to be trimmed, it will be necessary to carefully mark the tank sump to the dimension where it will be trimmed. I strongly recommend using a tape measure and a heavy marking pen, such as a Sharpie, to carefully mark the sump around the outside radius where the cutting will be required. After the sump has been properly marked, use a cutting tool with the appropriate fiberglass or composite compatible blade and carefully cut the sump base along the marked line. Take care to cut evenly so that the top of the sump is even and smooth. Please note that the proper PPE must be used during this step. After cutting the sump base, it is a good idea to dry fit the sump base onto the tank collar to confirm that there is minimum 20 inch clearance below finish grade as measured at the string line. Step four, preparing the tank sump base and tank collar for fiberglassing. As discussed earlier, surface preparation is a critical step for proper fiberglassing. The mating faces of the tank collar and the bottom of the tank sump base will need to be sanded properly to allow for fiberglassing. Use an angle grinder or very heavy grit sandpaper to sand the mating surfaces of these two parts on the inside and outside edges where the fiberglass resin will be applied. We're going to be using the uh, SCR FGK fiberglassing kit to do the fiberglassing of the tank sump to the tank collar. The fiberglass kit includes the following components. One gallon of polyester resin, two bottles of Catalyst, two paintbrushes, two stirring sticks, some protective gloves, a fiberglass roller, two mixing buckets, and the key component is the fiberglass tape. This is 100 yards of 3.5 inch wide FRP tape. It's very light, so the fiberglass goes easily through it. It's not a, a, a thick uh, fiberglass mat. It's just a, a lightweight fiberglass tape. We're going to put three total wraps of fiberglass around the tank sump to tank collar joint. As I mentioned before, surface preparation is absolutely critical when you are fiberglassing or bonding to fiberglass. 
So step one is surface preparation. We've already done that. That's the light grinding or heavy grit sandpaper sanding. The second is just before the fiberglassing step, we're going to want to use acetone, uh, a very good cleaning solvent, to clean the fiberglass dust residue and any construction dust that might have gotten onto the surfaces that we're going to be fiberglassing. We want those to be clean and dry. So Roberto is now going to take some acetone and with a clean rag he's going to again clean off the surfaces that were just sanded. You can see the acetone is cleaning and removing the fiberglass dust and any construction dust or debris that needs to be completely clean so that we get a good bond of the fiberglass uh, resin to the fiberglass surface. You can see on Roberto's rag the fiberglass dust that uh, has come off while we cleaned it with the solvent, with the acetone. And uh, if that surface had this material or, or dust on it during the fiberglassing, we're not going to get a good bond. The resin is not going to have anything to grab onto. Okay, we're going to do the same thing on the mating surface at the base of the tank sump itself, on both sides. Okay, we're going to add the, uh, the catalyst to the resin now. Roberto's pouring a quart of resin into the mixing bucket. And uh, in this heat, we're going to use less than the standard 15 milliliters of catalyst. It's uh, close to 80 degrees here today, so we're going to use 5 milliliters. Uh, and that should be more than enough to make the resin go off in this heat. So he's using the uh, supplied mixing cup, which has the... Uh, milliliters called out on it and he's pouring five milliliters of catalyst into the cup and then he's going to mix that into the uh, the resin itself mix it thoroughly and then we'll be ready to go okay so now the next step Larry's going to show uh, taping or I should say painting a thick bead of the resin around the entire radius of the sump where the sump meets the tank collar, so the tank collar joint. So the guys are using the supplied paintbrushes and they're putting a nice thick bead of the resin catalyst mixture around the outer radius of the tank collar joint. In this heat they probably have about 30 minutes of working time with the resin catalyst mixture. Once that's done, uh, they're going to start putting on layers of the uh, FRP tape. And this is a nice effective way of doing it. They've pre-cut the strips and they're simply going to pull them tight and lay it down directly onto the resin that's been applied to the tank collar joint. As you can see, this is a two-man job. And again, that thin FRP tape should stick right onto the, uh, onto the uh, resin catalyst. And then you use your hand to press it on it and allow the, uh, the resin catalyst mixture to flow through the tape. Roberto is now putting the second layer of the resin over the first layer of tape. Again, you can see the resin flowing right through the tape. Uh, they're simply painting it on. Okay, we're now putting the second layer of tape on. Now that we've uh, put the resin on over the first layer, again, we're doing three total wraps around the radius. Uh, at this point, we want to make sure that we're not overlaying butts or ends, so we're starting at a different point than the first layer, just so that we don't have three butt end joints, which could be a leak path. Now 
Again, as you can see, the, the tape is sticking right onto the resin mixture. And now we're going to put another layer of resin on top of the second layer of tape. Once the second layer of tape is put on, it's a good idea, uh, especially in cooler weather, to allow the resin to get a little tacky so that the weight of the resin and tape don't begin to pull the tape down. Um, so we're going to give it about five minutes in this uh, 80 degree heat just to allow that resin to set up a little bit uh, so that we can then put on the third layer of tape. The last thing we want is to have our first two layers uh, sag down off the joint and then have to re-sand and re-prep the, uh, the joint. Okay, so this is the, the third and final layer of fiberglass tape. Uh, the first two layers have uh, tacked up and now we're going to put on the third layer. Again, the guys have pre-cut the tape to make it a little bit easier and they don't have to unroll the tape as they go. So just like the previous layers, that layer of tape is uh, adhering to the resin that's on the joint. And the final step is going to be to paint over the third and final layer of FRP tape. After completing the three complete wraps of the fiberglass tape around the tank collar joint and putting a top layer of fiberglass resin above the final uh, wrap of tape, uh, at least 12 hours should be allowed for proper cure time. If it's colder than 50 degrees, please allow for additional cure time. The uh, fiberglass wrap is fully cured now, and the next step is going to be uh, pouring the inner joint where the tank collar meets the tank sump uh, with the RK5000 epoxy resin kit. The RK5000 consists of a Part A and a Part B. Uh, we simply need to mix Part B into Part A thoroughly for the finished epoxy that we're going to use to pour the joint. Like all adhesives, these materials work best when their internal temperature is approximately 60 to 80 degrees. Today the temperature is 75 degrees, so it's the optimal temperature for using the RK5000 epoxy resin kit. Now that we've poured the inner joint, uh, we have a we have two barriers against any leak at that uh, gap or joint between the tank collar and the tank sump itself. We have the outer fiberglass tape and the inner epoxy pour. Just like the fiberglass resin, the epoxy will take approximately 12 hours to cure. Once it's cured, uh, stress can be put on it and penetrations can be cut. Once the base of the sump is installed, trimmed, and the penetrations for piping and electrical conduits have been made, you can prepare the top hat for installation. First, the surface prep must be performed on the top of the sump base and on the underside of the sump top hat. And again, he's doing the top of one inch or so, so that uh, when we do put the caulk on, it's going to bond properly to the surface. Roberto's now sanding the bonding channel. This is what we're going to fill with the 40FC sealant. After we've sanded, we're going to use acetone to clean any of the sanding residue, any of the fiberglass dust, or any construction dust off of the surfaces that are going to be bonded. So we're also wiping and cleaning the bonding channel uh, to remove any of the dust that might be in it. You can see there's a fair amount of fiberglass dust down inside that channel. That all needs to be removed so that we have a nice clean bonding surface. It's really important that this bonding channel be entirely clean before we put the tube, tube and a half of sealant into the channel. Okay, the next step now is we're going to use the tubes of 40FC. We're going to use a tube, tube and a half to fill this channel on the underside of the top hat with the sealant. This works a lot easier if you obviously have a battery-powered caulk gun. We want to put a relatively thick bead into that channel.
The guys have picked up the top hat and they're going to flip it over and position it in place on top of the riser. Once it's positioned, they're going to seat it. Okay, the guys have seated the top hat on top. They press down so that they have a nice tight fit. And now we're going to seam the outside edge. After the top hat has been seated onto the sump base, we will then use the remaining caulk to apply a bead of sealant around the outer radius of the sump top hat to the sump base joint, as shown below. If possible, it is also recommended that the inner joint of the sump top hat to sump base also be seamed off as well. This can be done using a gloved finger and soapy water to ensure a watertight seal. After installing the sump top hat using the sealant, at least 12 hours should be allowed for proper cure time before putting any stress on the sump base. At least 24 hours should be allowed prior to performing any hydrostatic testing on the sump. We're now going to be uh, mixing up the resin and the catalyst. The point of the next step is we're going to be using this fiberglass tape to tape the outer radius of the sump top hat to sump riser joint. So Corey has uh, put 10 milliliters of catalyst into the mixing bucket and he's going to be putting a quart of resin in. That's the proper mixture uh, at this temperature which is about 70 degrees today. So he's added the resin, that's just a standard polyester resin. He's now adding a little over 10 milliliters of catalyst into the resin and he's going to mix it up with a stirring stick until the catalyst is fully blended through the resin. So Roberto is now going to paint a layer of fiberglass resin onto the surface that's been prepared uh, at the top hat to sump riser joint. So he's put in a nice thick bead on about a four inch wide section where the top hat lip meets the top of the uh, sump riser. Okay, the guys are now going to put the first layer of fiberglass tape onto the resin. Uh, as you can see, the joint has a little bit of a return to it, so they're going to have to fold it back over. You can see Larry's now painting a, a second layer of resin on it, which makes it a little more flexible and a little easier to bend around that uh, return at the top hat lip. The tape is nice and thin, so the resin flows right through it. Uh, the guys are provided with a uh, with a roller, but as you can see, it's it's hardly needed. It's important to note that this should not be done in the rain or in extremely cold temperatures. Okay, so the guys have now put a second layer of uh, resin on, and they're going to put a second layer of tape on. Uh, they're making sure they're starting. Uh, they've staggered their starting point so that there's no butt end joints uh, with the fiberglass tape. The setup time is going to be for the resin, which is going to be after all three layers are installed. After the third and final layer of FRP tape is applied to the sump top hat joint, allow at least 12 hours for proper cure time before putting any stress on the top hat. Allow 24 hours for cure time prior to performing any hydrostatic testing. Sump testing and backfilling. Once all tank sump joints are fully cured, hydrostatic tank sump testing can be performed. If leaks occur during testing, contact OPW technical support immediately. After hydrostatic tank sump testing is successfully performed, backfill sumps evenly to prevent any damage to the tank sump. All right, on top of every one of the Fiberlite sumps, there's going to be a factory installed stainless steel retaining ring. It'll be set level on top of the sump. This is the underside of the watertight lid. This is our 33 inch diameter lid. It's got a uh, urethane gasket that runs around the radius on the underside of the lid. Um, when this lid is seated on top of the stainless steel ring and each of these cam lock handles are turned to the closed position it's going to create a watertight seal. So now all of the cam lock T handles are in the closed position and that means there's a nice tight seal the gasket is compressed against the ring and it's a watertight lid.